Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome to Mahogany Sweets. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button if you want to. But I wanted to come and talk to you guys about your girl, Latoya Forever. It's her YouTube name, vlogger, Latoya Ali on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. So she knew, I think she's what, a friend of the show right now on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, she came off of YouTube as a vlogger. She was a married woman with children. That's her husband, and, well, her ex-husband now and her three children. And this is her new boo right here named Von Ray. She just recently created a YouTube channel with him, introducing him to her fans, subscribers, or whatever. But I wanted to come talk to her because there's a lot going on with her as everyone know. Right? But I'm going to have to do a separate video about the other stuff concerning her divorce and um, just how she has sparked who she is and where it started from. I'm just about to talk about the Real Housewives of Atlanta right now. Um, not so much a review of it, but an assessment of her on there and why I think we've been seeing what we're seeing from her. So... As I've already told you, Latoya came from YouTube as a vlogger. Her desire and dream has always been to be in showbiz. She wants money and fame. Um, nothing's wrong with that. Just as long as it's in its proper place and you're not willing to literally do anything to get it, right? Um, well, she is willing to do anything to get fame and money. And she cares more about the fame, I think, than the money, all right? So anyway, though, let's just talk about her on the show. So she came on the show. She was supposed to have been Kenya's sidekick, right? Have that Kenya energy. Um, rock with Kenya because we know Kenya is somewhat at odds with all the girls. She's on an island of her own. So she was supposed to be one of the fresh new faces that came in to be a companion to Kenya. But her role was also to still have, you know camaraderie with the other ones as well to be the link between all of the above I guess you can kind of say I also think that she might have been put on to come under Kenya to be an understudy and take Kenya's place like be Kenya's replacement going forward because we have three new girls this season on the Real Housewives of Atlanta um, this young lady Latoya then you have Drew and then you have Fallon all three of these young ladies are the new cast members they are in the same age group and stuff like that. So, we know that the other castmates, the OGs, they've been at this for a very long time. You know, it's time for fresh new faces and um, a younger crowd to bring in a younger crowd as well and have a new, a new line of women sent to grow with, right? So, these three young ladies was the ones who they had brought in. She was going to be given the role of Kenya, I believe, um, to be the villain of the show. Um, where, you know, let's say Drew and Fallon, they were supposed to take on a Candy and Nene or something like that, right? Or, um, so I don't know. Does you get what I'm trying to say, though? That. Let me start rambling, as I often do. So... What happened, though, is she turned around and I guess did not want to be in that Kenya role. Not the aspect of being a villain. Didn't want to be in the role of being Kenya's sidekick and who she mainly interacts with, films with, and stuff like that. It seemed like she wanted to build other relationships and alliances or whatever. The other thing where she's messed up is she should have really right set under Kenya because Kenya balances her role very well. You know, it takes a skill to give the right amount of shade, um, having the right amount of beef with certain people and then still being able to have a bridge amongst the other ladies. She came in as doing it all wrong. She um, is overdoing it and overselling this villain role and it's not cute and light shade um, She calls herself being strategic, but nothing is strategic about it. She's she, she's actually shooting herself in the foot and I'm gonna tell you why because um, I think her strategy was All right, I'm coming in under Kenya 
but once she got in she wanted to kind of shift from that and she looked at it i'm not going against any of the ogs i am only going to come attack the the newer women right which was dumb that's not a good strategy due to the fact that they are aging out let's just be honest and call it what it is they're aging out they're boring basically at this point it's time for fresh new faces you drew fallon will become the ogs like y'all the first of the new batch y'all will become the ogs she was supposed to make sure she had a good alliance with them throw shade but light cute shade with them ladies um, because, you know, they know it on a TV show and it needs to be entertaining. So, of course, they know it's going to be a level of shade and drama involved. You know, they throw their own shade and drama. But, she, um, and you know, and you be cool with them so the show can progress on. Other women can come through. You already got alliances and familiarity with these women. Um, you know, on some level. And work it from there. She has not done that. And it was dumb of her not to. She is isolating herself from the other two women instead of being smart strategic. That even if you wasn't going to make an alliance with them as far as dealing with and interacting with them on a you and Kenya type of way it's supposed to be. At least off screen they're supposed to know like hey us three is an alliance. We see the play. We're the new fresh faces. We will become the OGs. Let's all make sure we can film together, interact together, have some which shouldn't have been hard for them to buy like I said y'all all the new girls y'all all in the same age group and stuff like that but anyway instead she comes in and she initially was going after Drew but then she realized Drew will pop her so she realized she had to back off with Drew right that's how some of these scary bullies is they come after who they think is weak and who they can get away with it and once they realize that they can't then they back down and try and play nice and come correct so that's what we seen with her and Drew. She realized Drew would pop her. So she start trying to play a bit more correct and have some type of camaraderie with her. And then her new target was Fallon. Now I think her new target, Fallon, um, she, she of course deems her as weaker. But I also think it isn't just as her being strategic like okay well I need to beef with someone, come after someone. Um, like I said, she's going after people the wrong way anyway. It's too much. It's too aggressive too soon for no reason. Like, let a storyline build to where you have a relationship with these people to have some type of spite. Instead of you just coming just shooting bazookas at the new girls. Like, it's just dumb. But anyway, I also believe that she's jealous of Fallon. And that's what making it easier for her to target Fallon. Not just because she thinks she's weak, a weak link. Not just because she has to will feel like she has to come up against and drag someone but it's um also because she's jealous of Fallon and where Fallon is well what Fallon has in life not where she is well yeah where she is too that too so Fallon though kind of let her know like girl I will lay hands on you too you keep on you keep keeping on well anyway her response her strategy of not going against any of the OGs was stupid. She should have did what she was supposed to do. Stuck with Kenya. Um, and I say Candy right. Leave Candy alone. Stay clear of her. Trying to stay on her good side. But she could have threw light shade with Marlo. Against Marlo, Cynthia, and stuff like that. To really build initially some type of relationship with all of them. To some degree, and then lighthearted shade against certain ones. This season, right? You click with Kenya, and let's say click, like I said, click with the two new girls, and through your shade with Kenya against Portia, um, through some at Cynthia at Marlo. You know what I'm saying? She didn't to me play it right, but I think that she also was kind of thrown off. Her initial plan was to come on with her husband and children. And her storyline was just going to be exploiting her husband, embarrassing and digging and trashing him of why she is leaving him, divorcing him, and then divorce on the show, you know, like, like that. That did not work out for her because her husband knew what her game plan and scheme was. And he said, I'm not about to play with real life, love and relationship, family for TV. You know what I'm saying? Um... Because this woman's character, Latoya's character, is one that, like I said, willing to do anything for fame. Um, she uses things, people, as a stepping stone to get to where she wants to go. And the only person who she cares about is herself. And being on TV. Being on TV has been her dream and her goal um, 
for the longest. That's all that she cares about is tunnel vision towards that, which I believe is another reason why she is over performing, you know. She's overperforming, trying to oversell it to make sure that she gets to be on TV and stay on TV. And I think it might shoot her in the foot. The route that she's chosen to take on the TV show and how it's being received by everyone, um, not a good reception at all, I think it's going to get her no peach at all. This will probably be her last season. Um, it might, I don't know, it could be that small chance where Andy, we know, messy toxic and stuff and the producers might look at it like well no we love it right she's going to be our new villain and we know that she's willing to exploit her own dang on self for pennies on the dollar so they can use her as a puppet and exploit her even more like well she's exploiting herself they can just allow her to exploit herself for pennies on the dollar for a couple of more pennies you get what i'm saying so i don't know andy and, the, and bravo might look at it like that like, okay, we're going to hit a gold mine with this. Let's have her be the villain. Really pay her nothing. She going to do all the work and more for us. Um, the fans hate her. But they don't have a problem with that. But it could possibly be, like I said, since people reception of her has been so horrible. Because, like, she got what she wants. You got more eyes on you. You're on TV. But what is it going to benefit you? Because she has turned a lot of people off. And I think that she has even... Um, turn Candy off because Candy, right, is a boss on on Bravo as well as off of Bravo and ATL network in the business. So it looks like she is trying to use Candy or have with Candy what she initially was doing with Kenya and supposed to do with Kenya on film as well as off film because, like I said, Candy is the boss of that show as well as off of that show. But we know all know Candy is very tolerable. Candy is very neutral. She's like Switzerland. Um, she gives people room to be themselves, but she also gives people room to hang themselves. Um, she can be very forgiving, but at the end of the day, she's a businesswoman. She's going to do what makes sense for business as well as what protects her. I think that, once again, Toya, being extra, being dramatic, all out for self and just doing too much and whatever she thinks necessary... Um, trying to cling on to Candy and I think that it has bit her in the foot and I'm going to tell you why. On one of those Bravo episodes they put on YouTube of like where they interview a couple of ladies together um, about what's happened on the show. It was her and Candy and she brought up why Candy won't expose Portia for being with Bolo since Portia basically tried to throw her under the bus with the incident that happened some years ago about her drugging people and being in dungeons and stuff like that and you know and candy's telling you know like well i don't get down like that and you know i made a money tree out of a shade tree and stuff and then she said this she said um well no nah, if it was me if portia had did that to me i'm exposing everybody i'm telling you all i'm gonna do and you if go and look at that episode if y'all haven't seen it it's on youtube Candy, you can see the click right there where Candy looked at like, oh wow, I've been willing to save you, I've been willing to tolerate you, I've been willing to possibly even, you know, give you a leg up on screen and off screen. Like I told you, Candy has power at Bravo as well as just in ATL and in showbiz. Um, but you could tell the click right there where Candy was like, oh yeah, I'm backing up off you completely because we all know that Candy is a thoroughbred. She's not into exposing people. She's not into hitting below the belt. She is not into um, using those type of tactics as revenge as, as far as exposing people, personal life and business and stuff like that. And as we know, Candy is dealing with her own levels of people putting rumors out about her, trying to expose different things that she do. Candy is very hushed to the lip, and that's whether you're a friend or a foe, or even an enemy, as we all know. So I think that right there told Candy, like, yeah, I don't trust you, and I'm not rocking with you because I don't get down like that. So I think she just totally screwed herself up with that. Doing too much, too fast, um, talking too much, thinking that what she was doing was back in Candy and... Um, positioning herself to 
to be in with Candy, which she was in with Candy. She didn't have to try that hard. Like, she's not following cues. You're supposed to be in Kenya understudy. You didn't stick to the script and follow cues. You've already shown all these women that you're a snake. Because the minute that you went to go and expose Kenya's personal information amongst them, which was her attempt to make them feel like, look, y'all, I'm not just all Kenya. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could have showed them you weren't all Kenya without backstabbing Kenya. That made them all immediately pick up a guard. And then when she just turned around and told Candy, um, that she would expose everyone and she gets down like that as far as hitting below the belt, which we all know that she does in real life. Like, that wasn't just her running at the mouth too quick. No, that's how she really gets down. Like, this woman has used, abused. She's a narcissist at heart, okay? And her husband, who she just used the heck out of, and is now trying to put a knife in his back. Oh, yeah, because, right, I'm going to do a video about all of that. But anyway... Candy doesn't get down like that. And you revealed and exposed this. If she was smart, she would have once again, under Candy, been her understudy. Be strategic. Pay attention. How does this woman think? How does this woman move? What has she shown us of who she is and how, how she is? And then you would have catered to that. But instead, you went all off in left field, trying to be up in her butt. And now she's about to shit you out. You know what I'm saying? So, um... The girl is not too bright. It's like you wouldn't do all this cutthroat stuff just to be somebody, be on TV, be um, famous, and you're not. The strategy that you're using for it isn't the smartest strategy because you. It's just a certain way you're supposed to move when you need something, want something, trying to get somewhere. So I personally think that she will not be coming back next season. Um, if she does, cool, we'll see what happens then. She's actually in the process right now of trying to rebrand herself. If you looked at, but see, she's still at her same dumb antics. Because she actually did a video called Why I Got a Divorce. Um, and it's an attempt to rebrand herself, to do damage control, as well as to um, attack and paint a narrative towards her ex-husband. But she still ain't even doing that in in a clever, smart, strategic way. So, it's like, girl, you're working hard to try and get ahead. But you just sweating bullets and cutting toes and breaking fingernails just to stand in place, okay? Or she might even fall further back. Because, yeah, you got on the TV show. You have more eyes on you. But it's kind of off or not because the reception of you is... These people don't like you. And people who you already did have liking you and rooting for you are no longer. Like, you're even turning your day ones and already fans against you with your antics. Um, so, I don't know how she's going to spin this around. And it don't seem like she's really learned, like I said, from the damage control and rebranding. And so, Posa had been a strategic video that she just did called Why I Divorced My Husband or some crap like that. So, it's just all bad. It's just all bad. She can't find the clue because she's tunnel vision on fame and money and trying to get somewhere that she's not paying attention to anything else around her. And she's willing to claw at, kick, and shoot in the leg anybody around her to get it. So, I don't see her going far, but we'll see what happens. Tell me what you guys think about her on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, if you are familiar with her as a vlogger and other things going on in her personal life, let me know what you think about that. Because I got a lot to say, but I'm going to have to do that in a separate video. Because I actually just made a whole video combining what I had to say right now about Real Housewives of Atlanta. As well as what's going on in her personal life and and um, her YouTube channel and all the mess with that. And it ended up being like over an hour long. So that's what I'm saying. No, I'm going to have to split these up be focused on a video and try and get it done in a smaller portion but um yeah so tell me what you guys think about her to me what she's shown us on the show is she just comes off as just a ghetto uneducated trying too hard fame whore you get what i'm saying like just trashy um she's coming out gun blazing and trying to drag these women when no you don't even know them enough 
to even have a grievance enough towards them to be trying to dragon them gun blazing. Um, this is supposed to be light shade, and what you're actually supposed to be doing if you're being strategic is trying to build bridges and relationships with all of them, get familiar with all of them and where they stand, and do light banter, um, shade back and forth towards all of them, or with some of them, I guess you can say. And then you wait till your next season to do more. But still, even not even like this. Like, it's just ridiculous. It's crazy. Um, what strategy she chose to take. Because it's not strategic. Give me you guys thoughts. Thanks for watching.